Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come with. Okay, so this should be interesting. This is going to be Harry, Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex. This is going to be Harry from birth to now in about a page and a half. So um, this should be very interesting. And then I'll do a, a reading on that uh, afterwards. So listen up. Okay, so this will be interesting, I think. Um, I've got a synopsis. I have a synopsis of uh, Harry from birth till now. And it's it's pretty succinct. And um, it, I, I think it's going to be it's about a page and a half. So we'll just go right through it. And uh, I'll start uh, right at the top, of course. In 1984, the 15th of September, Prince Henry Charles Albert David is born at the Lindo Wing of St. Mary's Hospital, London. Uh, he's christened at St. George's Chapel, uh, Windsor. Now, 1985, baby Harry goes on a tour of Italy with mom and dad. In 1987, the three-year-old now attends Miss Miner's Nursery School. And then in 1989, school uh, in Kensington, London for the five-year-old's uh, primary uh, education. Then 1991, mom and dad take him and William on a four-day visit to Ontario, Canada. Wow. So in 1992, at eight years of age, Harry attends Ludgrove School, uh, Berkshire. Uh, also, Prince Charles and Diana separate that year. 1996, the marriage was dissolved and they share custody of the boys. In 1997, Diana is killed in a car crash in Paris. And uh, Harry is 12 or 13 and William... Uh, we're told about this in uh, Balmoral Castle in Scotland. The brothers walk behind their mother's coffin. Um, that's also the year Harry enrolls at Eton College. 1998, uh, Harry and William make a formal request for the media to allow them privacy. <laughs> so, 2003... Now, 19-year-old Harry leaves Eton with uh, two A-levels in art and uh, geography. And then uh, 2004, Harry takes a gap year in Australia working on a cattle station and helping with orphan children later in Lesotho, South Africa. In 2005, 21-year-old Harry attends the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst and also begins a relationship with, does anybody remember, Chelsea Davy. In 2006, Harry completes officer training and becomes a second, as the Brits say, lieutenant in the uh, Blues and Royals. And then 2007, uh, Harry cannot serve in Iraq. He is a high-risk target and endangers the entire regiment. He uh, goes to train with the soldiers of the Canadian forces in Canada. Now, 2008, Harry... He's soldier. Harry is sent to Afghanistan. He receives the operational service medal. 2009, the relationship with Chelsea Davies, oh yeah, remember her now, uh, ends. Uh, and he trains to fly military helicopters. And then in 2010, he completed his flying training. In 2011, he passes the Apache uh, attack helicopter flying test and is promoted to who? Captain Wales. And is best man for William and Catherine at Westminster Abbey. 2012, he's 28 years old. He's part of the Queen's Diamond Jubilee touring Belize, the Bahamas, and Jamaica. And he begins a relationship now with Cressida Bonus. I don't remember her. Granddaughter of Earl Howe. Uh, the prince represents Queen Elizabeth II at the closing ceremony of the London Olympic Games. And the American celebrity website TMZ publishes pictures of Harry naked in a Las Vegas hotel room. Then... Harry begins a four-month tour of Afghanistan. <laughs> Quiet things down. Uh, 2013, Prince Harry makes a six-day official visit to the United States. He qualifies as an Apache aircraft commander and makes a tour of Australia. And then 2014, Harry launches the Invictus Games for the injured servicemen and women. Harry and Cressida Bonus end their relationship. He visits Brazil and Chile and attends World War II, World War One cent centenary uh, commemorations in. Folkestone, England, and also Belgium. Uh, Harry lists, or he visits rather, he visits uh, Lesotho, South Africa. And then in 2000, uh, 2015, he leaves the armed forces for more royal duties on behalf of the Queen. He's made a Knight Commander of the Royal Victorian Order. He returns to Lesotho for the opening of the Momohato uh, Children's Center. Uh, oh, of course, that's South Africa. So this is uh, 
This is 2016, and Harry visits Nepal and helps rebuild a school damaged in an earthquake. He meets American actress Meghan Markle at a club in Toronto, and they begin dating. And Harry takes an HIV test this year to raise awareness and then uh, takes a two-week tour of the Caribbean on behalf of the Queen, and the relationship with Meghan Markle is officially announced. That was a big 2016. Uh, 2017, the two make their first public appearance at the third Invictus Games in Toronto, Canada. They become engaged. Harry is appointed president of Africa Parks, a conservation organization in Africa. And then 2018, the prince is appointed president of the Queen's Commonwealth Trust. He's appointed lieutenant commander of the Royal Navy, major of the British Army, and squadron leader of the Royal Air Force. Harry and Meghan marry at St. George's Chapel, Windsor. And the Queen creates Harry, Duke of Sussex, Earl of Dumbarton, and uh, Baron Kilkeel. Kilkeel. Harry becomes a personal aide de camp to the Queen. Kensington Palace announces Meghan is pregnant as the couple begin a tour of Australia. So that also is a big year. Now, 2019, even better, Archie Harrison Mountbatten Windsor, Windsor is born. Harry and Meghan begin a tour of South Africa with baby Archie. Harry sues the sun in the mirror over phone hacking. And in 2020, Harry and Meghan announced stepping back from being senior royals and divide time between the UK and the USA, and will be, they'll become financially independent. They will maintain their current patron, patron, patronages hard word for an old country boy to say, patronages, and set up a, a new charitable foundation. Harry and Meghan step back from royal duties and do not receive public funding. They no longer use HRH titles nor represent the Queen and repay £2.4 million that was used to refurbish uh, Frogmore Cottage. 2020, Harry and Meghan announced that a second child will be born in the summer. In 2021, Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan will not return as working members of the royal family. The Oprah Winter interview was broadcast in the U.S. and in the U.K. the next day, and a number of claims were made against the royal family. Harry's grandfather, this year also, the Prince Philip, uh, dies. Harry attends a funeral in St. George's Chapel, Windsor. Uh, pregnant Meghan remains in the U.S. advised not to travel. Harry criticizes the BBC following the publication of the Dyson Report, which revealed that deceit, actual deceit, had been used by Martin Bashir uh, to obtain the famous interview with his mother Diana so many years before. Uh, Bashir has already since passed away. Uh, he stated that uh, his mother's death was a direct result of the interview and slated the media for its continued use of fake news and deceitful practices to obtain interviews and statements. Oh, and daughter... Uh, Lilibet Diana is born, Lily, uh, in California. So, all up to date. Easy peasy. So this is the Druid Craft Tarot, and uh, it's sort of uh, on the magic of uh, Wicca and uh, Druidity. Or Druidry? Maybe that's the correct uh, terminology. Uh, Philip and Stephanie Carr Gom, uh, with illustrations by Will Worthington. Really nice deck. Um, they're a little, um, the car, the box is fantastic because you really feel like you got a nice quality uh, gift if you gave that. The guidebook is huge and uh, the only thing I would say is that it's a shame it's not in full color, but it gives you some, some useful uh, divination uh, for the cards in there, so I like that. The cards themselves, the one uh, gripe I have is that you have to dump them out of the box, which I'm not that happy about. But um, the cards themselves, they're huge, so some people might find them a little awkward to use, but I like them. And uh, the divination that you get out of them is amazing. There's so much thought that went into each picture, every element of each picture. And um, so they're very useful in almost any uh, circumstance where you're going to use these. And I like to spread them out like this. Uh, if I'm doing a reading with someone, then I like to usually let them uh, spread them out like this to kind of get their energy into the cards. It's a good way to mix them up without, you know, damaging the cards too much, uh, which is uh, always important to me. So these cards are fantastic, Druidcraft Tarot. So I think I know the perfect um, line of questions for this uh, full Celtic cross regarding Harry. So we've got his whole life we've, from beginning to now, from birth to to having given birth with uh, two children here now. So the question will be, because someone asked me, one of your viewers, I uh, made a comment that um, 
Harry should just chuck all this foolishness. You know, this isn't word for word, but to chuck all this and just go back and fulfill his royal duty like it's supposed to. And then everything will be fine. And I wonder if we can ask the cards, is Harry actually fulfilling his destiny right now in, in, in doing what he's doing? Is this actually going to be... Um, and then we'll find out if this, this is going to be, uh, in the end, uh, beneficial to the monarchy, which I think it will. So that's going to be the question. So six cards right off the top. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we have four more at the end for that last part of the question. So is Harry fulfilling his destiny or is he on the wrong track? Is Harry fulfilling his destiny uh, in the best way? Okay, in the best way forward, or is he on the wrong track? The uh, signifier of this card is the Two of Swords. Well, that's very interesting because the Two of Swords, in fact, does mean having to make a choice. Am I going to go this way or am I going to go that way? It's very spooky that this would be the signifier card. Which way are you going to go, Harry? Uh, the challenge to that, to knowing which way to go, then, is the Ace of Pentacles. And, you know, the Ace, the Pentacles are, are worth, of value. They could even be money. But it's more about uh, someone's value. And so being offered the Ace of Pentacles would probably uh, influence uh, which way you go. And so I think if he was going to follow his greater worth, then that would uh, make the decision as to which track uh, he would follow. And then the uh, base of this reading then is the Four of Pentacles, which is then that led him to the point of having to hold on to whatever value he has and use it in the most uh, credible way possible or the most valuable way. So what what is the value that he has? Any money, of course, that he has or can accumulate, he needs to hold on to that just to maintain his life. And then uh, the truths that he has uh, and to reveal, uh, he might consider those as the values that he has to hold on to instead of perhaps uh, some uh, what he might be considered mistruths. So the past of this reading then is the Queen of Cups. And the Queen of Cups comes to us with you know a, a, a little big offer of compassion. Look, she's gotten up off of her, of her seat. She's dipped a toe into the, the uh, cool, uh, calming uh, waters of emotion. She still has one foot on land. And uh, there seems to be some light uh, forward with this great big offer of compassion. So he comes from, this has to be Queen, uh, <laughs> this has to be his mom, Diana, you know, bringing him an offer of compassion. Uh, the sky of this reading then is justice. Yeah. So what is true and what is fair? And it seems like what this young man is about. Uh, he wants to, to have justice. And maybe he's not entitled to it. Maybe none of us are. Uh, but that's, I think that's where, where he's looking is for justice. Um, in the um, likely outcome of this first part of this Celtic cross for uh, is he following his destiny is the King of Cups. And I think that is his aim is to be the compassionate uh, master uh, of his destiny. I really do believe that's true. So for the last part of this, we're going to say, um, is this path that he's following in the end going to be beneficial to the monarchy? OK, what is the self of that question? Will the path Harry's following actually be beneficial to the monarchy? The self of that is the Seven of Swords. And the Seven of Swords is really having a lot of obstacles to deal with and then having to really suffer through making the choices of which of these truths, which of these justices you're going to deal with. And this looks like this is the monarchy. As a matter of fact, uh, looking at all these truths, all these justices that this issue has brought to bear. And if I say, is this going to be good for the monarchy? Is this is saying that monarchy is now busy having to deal with all of this. Okay. The seven, the seven of Swords is considered kind of a, a, um, a thief in the night. And, um, and so maybe that's a little bit of what we're looking at here. The uh, environment that that's in, though, however, uh, for them is the King of Pentacles. Okay, yeah, and again, the monarchy has to be concerned with what is their worth and how to stay on top of it 100%. A big uh, a balance of fire and passion and uh, that is what this, uh, the, and, and we're not talking about the Queen, we're not talking about Charles, we're not talking about William, we're talking about the institution of the monarchy, which is bigger than them and bigger than the people that run them, bigger than the firm. So the king, and it's whether uh, whoever is the head of the monarchy at the time, recognizes that value. So that's what they have to be. They have to maintain themselves They're in the environment of being the king of pentacles. The likely um, hopes and the fears of this is, ah, yeah, the fear is that it's an end of a cycle. This is the end of a monarchy. That would be the big, big, big fear. 
and I ask, is this going to be in the best interest of the monarchy or not? And the last card for that, the likely outcome, is going to be the Prince of Pentacles. And so the Prince certainly is not a king, and Pentacles certainly it does speak back to wealth. And so maybe this could say, if we want to stretch it a little bit and say, maybe this is William representing uh, what's left of the Pentacles, or is this Harry uh, bringing uh, this value back to the monarchy? I don't know. I'm really not sure about that last interpretation, but there we have it. Well, that was uh, kind of an abstract uh, situation. But we asked, uh, is uh, Harry following his path, the path that he should? And the signifier card was what? The Two of Swords, which is, you know, pick a, pick a path. Uh, and it, the challenge of it was this great big offer of uh, value, a big ace of uh, pentacles. So big offer of value saying, come this way. So could that be the lure of money? Uh, to to go off on his own, which he will need if he's gonna if he continues to be on his own, or is that his true inner value, his true core moral self, that kind of value? Uh, the basis of this is having to hold on to whatever value it is and whatever you think it is and whatever it's worth. That's where he's at right now, and then the uh, past of this showed up as uh, Princess Diana, uh, Queen of Cups, and then in the sky of this we have uh, justice, and I believe that's what he's seeking: is justice, some sort of a fair balance between all of that and the likely outcome for all of this was the King of Cups, which is, uh, in fact, uh, becoming the king of your passionate uh, situation. But then uh, we said, uh, for, so for the monarchy, is this in the best interest of the monarchy or not? And what do we get? We get the Seven of Swords, someone feeling as if there's been a thief in the night, and and, uh, and now they have to deal with the, these issues. And uh, they're in the um, environment uh, of, of being the King of Pentacles, really having to be the one in charge of your worth. Uh, with the likely out, uh, hopes and the fears is that the death of the monarchy is on the table here. And then the likely outcome of everything, we show up with the Prince of Pentacles, which I don't know if, it's, if this is William, is this Harry, is this a new start, is this how William goes out? I mean, I don't know what it is, but the Prince of Pentacles is the final uh, outcome for all of that. So maybe you can uh, let me know what you think. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now. Thank <laughs> you.